cool. Um, as you know, last London Prompt Use Meetup was a um, long time ago in January, and our aim is to make sure we make it more often uh, from now on. And because of, yeah, the last one was like uh, in January, we thought that it would be nice uh, to start after that break with some knowledge refreshment about prompt use, common usages, and maybe some new tooling that uh, were introduced, uh, introduced uh, recently. But first, a uh, short introduction. Uh, my name is Bartek, and I'm a software engineer at a co um, company called Improbable. I work at infrastructure of observability team, and my main duty is to make sure our engineers have, uh, get, can get a cl clear, um, crucial insight about correctness and performance and reliability of microservices and applications um, they are developing and maintaining. I'm also a um, maintainer of uh, several Golang open source libraries and projects, including Thanos, uh, that takes Prometheus a step further into global scale monitoring. Um, I also contribute to Prometheus itself, and I really recommend for you to do as well, because uh, the code base is nice, the maintainers are welcoming, and basically it's awesome experience. I hope I don't need to convince anyone that monitoring is actually really important, but if I would, I would, ease, I would use this saying um, that I heard a couple of years ago um, that goes, running a product without any monitoring is like, uh, not running the product it's, uh, at all. And at the beginning, it seems a bit radical, right? Uh, when you think about it, um, if you don't have any monitoring, you don't have, but it's actually true because uh, if you don't have any, monitor any monitoring, uh, how you can tell if it's actually running? Um, how you can tell if it's actually healthy and, r and so solving your problem? Um, it might um, respond to your manual checks, but does it work for other users? Without monitoring, well, you don't know until some user calls you, uh, which is kind of too late. That's why monitoring is really, really essential. And exactly the similar message you can find and read in popular site reliability engineering book uh, written by um, Google engineers. They specify a reliability pyramid that you can compare to a kind of Maslow pyramid that defines requirements needed for system to be healthy and reliable. Um, basically, uh, from the bottom uh, to top. As you can see, monitoring is the foundation of it, and it is foundation because thanks of it, you can detect when things go wrong, uh, you can alert um, human to prevent issue before it even happens, you are able to debug, debug and gain insights, you can uh, see trends, so, you know, changes over time, and that uh, enables, enables you to make data-driven business or technical decisions. And many, many more, like feeding to other systems, like uh, horizontal um, scaling, auto pod autoscaler based on CPU consumption. Um, and the classic way uh, to categorize the monitoring topic is to um, divide that into three different domains. Um, so first of all, tracing, so any bit of data or metadata that is um, bound to the life cycle of the request in your system, logging, which is basically discrete events, and finally metrics, which are samples over span of time uh, composed into logical counters, gouges, or histograms that you can aggregate. And in fact, um, all the domains are really, really important and connected together, right? When we look closer on the typical kind of ideal troubleshooting process, it usually starts with uh, alerts that detects an underlying issue, for example, certain service being down or um, very high latency for uh, user, um, uh, for your like RPC call. Um, and proper alerts should link then to runbook or pre-built dashboard that you uh, go there and see some charts and visualizations of the metrics and that allows you to quickly narrow down the issue to like short time, short, short, um, time range and maybe a couple of components. Then if that's uh, kind of, it's not enough for you, then you need to fall back to ad hoc query. So basically doing manual queries against uh, monitoring backend. Um, hopefully at this point you know what uh, logs you are looking for. So you go to the log aggregator and um, you can basically tr try to find an event that is uh, responsible for the failure, for example. If you track down the, e the, the event, you can potentially go to the and find trace of it in like separate distributed uh, tracing backend. Um, 
and see the detailed overview of the life cycle of, uh, of your um, request that probably failed. Um, at the very end, all of those three domains gives, uh, so metrics, logging, and tracing, gives you uh, enough context to be able to know what and where uh, to apply the fix. So what pro prompt use project actually gives you um, in this process? Well, it's kind of uh, natural that uh, uh, since prompt use is an open source monitoring system, uh, it helps with exactly those, those three steps uh, at the very beginning because those heavily relies on metrics, um, usually white box ones, so those reported by, by internal applications, um, application internals, basically. And this is exactly what Prometheus is designed for. Um, Prometheus allows you to gather, store, and query uh, metrics that helps you um, in the mentioned uh, troubleshooting process, but the full power of the Prometheus monitoring comes uh, from the really rich uh, ecosystem. Um, that in Prometheus integrates with, and I will try to uh, go um, through them uh, bit by bit, bit by bit. bit. Mm. As you probably know, <coughs> Prometheus was inspired by Google's Berkman monitoring system and started at SouthCloud in 2012. It went public three years later, and now it is used by thousands of companies around the world. Um, in its core, uh, Prometheus offers basically a single powerful binary uh, that you can run on various systems, uh, operating systems, and architectures. Um, it is definitely a stateful application, and it comes with built-in um, time series database called TSDB that efficiently stores metrics uh, in the local file system. Um, it's worth also worth to note that TSDB um, is available as a GoBank library, a standalone one, so you can use um, you can basically use this uh, data, uh, data um, database totally outside of the Prometheus. So eventually, the primary functionality of Prometheus is to uh, collect the uh, metric uh, applica application metrics uh, via pool model. And there is huge advantage of that pool model versus push because it makes your application um, instrumentation very, very uh, simple and more reliable. Um, you don't need to worry about uh, where is your um, uh, metric backend you need to push, you don't need to worry about data uh, network partitioning, how to deal with those, um, what interval you should push, and things like that. Um, it's all consistently managed by the Prometheus itself. All you need to do is an HTTP uh, endpoint with simple human readable uh, text format that contains uh, current value of the application metrics. Here, for example, you can see a short snippet of uh, metric page generated by Prometheus itself. And you definitely don't need to implement the serving and handling of this, uh, of this endpoint on your own. There are various of uh, different efficient client libraries for Prometheus uh, in different languages that uh, allows you to register a metric in your code and use it as a variable, increment, set a value, and um, all should work. And if you want to have a metric for third-party systems like uh, database, Apache server, or uh, things like that, there are a large number of exporters that allows you um, basically to transform the different metric um, types into Prometheus understandable uh, metric page. Um, the most popular one, I would say, is a node exporter, which allows you to gather statics from a uh, Linux uh, box. And each scrape of the previous uh, metric page um, by Prometheus result in a single data point. So timestamp and value uh, tuple for each uh, unique metric. After multiple of scrapes, uh, what you can see inside Prometheus for this example um, is the unique um, time series, which is like unique label set with corresponded samples, um, so values and, and timestamps. Um, so it's pretty simple from that point of view. And small tip before we move forward, uh, when you instrument your own application, and even more important, when, when you uh, want to write your own uh, metric exporter, uh, this piece of tooling, which is called Prompt Tool Check Metrics, uh, is extremely, extremely useful. It allows you to check um, for naming correctness, conventions, uh, and if Prometheus can actually scrape and understand your um, met uh, metric page. And prompt tool itself is part of the Prometheus repository, so you can build it from uh, from source there, or you can get from the release page, and it is actually um, 
It is actually included in the package, Prometheus package in your package manager. And yeah, it's not that hard to hook it into your CI. Uh, you have your um, test end-to-end -end test that maybe spins up uh, your binary, and you can uh, run uh, check metrics against your metric endpoint. Um, back to scraping, because of the pool-based method, uh, the main configuration pieces for Prometheus is called scrape configuration, where you defined what services uh, Prometheus should retrieve metrics from. Uh, and these slides present a very simple possible configuration um, that uh, you put an address of the service uh, you want to scrape and you set it to scrape every 15 seconds, which is scrape interval. Um, it's worth to note that you can uh, reload this configuration dynamically. Um, Prometheus um, exposes a reload endpoint um, that when you reach it, it triggers the configuration uh, in runtime. And in case of broken configuration, broken uh, reload, so potentially your configuration is mistyped, there is a typo there, uh, it can be parsed. Um, it, uh, Prometheus uses the cached version, so it does not crash, uh, and triggers error metrics so you can alert on it, which is crucial. Um, however, usually you want to have something more powerful than, uh, than this, where, and, then, uh, and there is um, the case for the advanced service discovery that uh, helps a lot. Prometheus implements large number of uh, service discovery um, methods, mechanism, against different providers. Uh, there is a console, uh, GC, AWS, Kubernetes, OpenStack, DNS, you name it. You can use them to automatically um, find the needed uh, monitoring targets uh, in your dynamic infrastructure, right? You don't want to manually specify the IPs uh, every time your infrastructure changes. Um, and in our simple case, it fetch all the Kubernetes bots um, and attach some labels using relabeling. And what exactly is relabeling? Well, relabeling is quite, well, quite powerful piece of configuration that allows you to add the label um, to the metric, um, it, uh, rename the label, drop the label, drop the metric, or drop the whole target, or even alter how Prometheus um, scrapes um, uh, the tar your target in runtime. Uh, for example, maybe it needs HTTPS or different port. Uh, so it's quite powerful. Um, and here in our example, it's pretty simple. It grabs all the um, Kubernetes uh, meta label, which are not exposed because of those underscores, and then uh, exposed a couple of them, which we want. For example, namespace and pod name uh, based on the uh, meta, meta uh, meta labels given by the service discovery. But usually your labeling um, is much, much more complex. And since it's powerful, it's also, and dynamic, it's also difficult to debug. So make sure you to use like two very useful pages that Prometheus uh, exposes. So one is service discovery page that shows you all the discovered targets and uh, with labels uh, that were Bef uh, before and after relabeling, so it's pretty cool. It also shows you the targets that were dropped because of re reliable or for other reason, which is uh, really useful. The second one is kind of similar, but for targets uh, particularly, it shows you each monitoring target and the scrape status, which is helpful because it shows you the uh, last um, given error if there was any, and also if you hover over target labels, it shows you uh, yeah, the relabeling process. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to unit test to make that uh, part of your CI uh, because it relies on the dynamic data. Uh, maybe it would be a nice idea to have some framework, framework for it um, in future. Um, so we know how to store the data, how to collect them, but how to use this. Prometheus exposes um, HTTP query API that uses a language called PromQL. Uh, you can use PromQL directly to retrieve time series um, or use different visualization engines like built-in Prometheus UI or Grafana um, that helps you to configure uh, dashboard for your services. <coughs> PromQL is extremely powerful um, and flexible and there could be totally separate two hour talk just about practices and how to use it. Uh, but I will run just with the simple examples. Um, you can use, first of all, simple um, selector uh, that will select um, 
the metric name and labels you want, you can use the regex map selector as well to catch, for example, all the uh, server errors. You can apply functions uh, like rate, which uh, calculates per second average uh, of counter increase in five minutes vector. Uh, basically, it tells you how many errors were um, per second you had in the five minute window. Um, you can aggregate over different dimensions. For example, we aggregate by path, uh, so it gives you the nice overview which path has the most uh, errors per second. Um, all basically all the um, um, all the number of errors per second for for different paths. And finally, you can use arithmetic errors, uh, arithmetic binary operator like division to calculate the percentage of server errors of all requests. Um, and yeah, this is kind of uh, insane. You have lots of, the PromQL is really, really flexible and, and powerful. Um, there are a vast number of uh, operators, aggregations, uh, functions that you can use if you need to more advanced logic. All is well documented on the Prometheus documentation, uh, but in real life you usually use like five or six of those, but it's really nice, uh, well, it's really useful to be aware of those and know where to look for the detail in, uh, in um, information when you really need to do a tricky query. Um, last built-in mechanism in Prometheus that we want to cover is uh, built on top of PromQL, uh, which is rule evaluation. Uh, that it allows to configure um, the uh, rules that will perform periodic queries against Prometheus itself. And there are two types of those. Uh, first is recording rule. And that allows, this recording rule allows to record certain expression um, as a new time series. Uh, and you can use it to basically pre-compute an expensive query. Uh, and you can access the, the recording rule instead of the querying everything uh, each time. This basically uh, reduces the load on the Prometheus and gives you the answer very, uh, much, much quicker um, instead of querying the whole thing. Um, second type of the rule is alerting rule, uh, which allows you to uh, define alert condition based on the Prometheus query. Um, if the condition is met uh, in the current time and after the time in the for field passed, it is considered as active. Once the alert is active, it is triggered by Prometheus and sent into the alert managers that were um, configured in your Prometheus. And the alert manager is kind of essential part of the ecosystem because it makes alerts, um, it takes care of deduplicating, grouping, and routing of alerts uh, based on labels you have. So for example, if you have a label severity uh, equals to page, it might uh, route to the ops genie of page duty uh, to page your on-call engineer. And if, uh, if this label has um, like lower lower se severity, it might route you to like Slack or email or whatever. <coughs> um, alert manager also allows to silence an alert, so uh, basically mute it for a given time. And additionally, it allows you to use inhibits. Inhibit is a special type of configuration that allows to um, set some dependency on different between different alerts because usually. Well, sometimes you have alerts that are overlapping and you, you don't want to, for example, if class, the whole cluster is not reachable, you don't want to alert like thousand alerts around, um, okay, this cluster is unreachable and I have services running there and that were doing some work and I was asserting, alerting on that. Well, in this case, you would have like thousands of alerts at the same time. You want to set an inhibit that between uh, the cluster unreachable alert and rest to uh, have only one um, alert triggered on this case and reduce the noise. And um, yeah, with Alert Manager, our Prometheus overview is actually complete. Um, those components uh, together create a robust and reliable, reliable monitoring system that is kind of easy to deploy as well. And, and as the last thing I would like to cover, uh, I would like to show you some piece of tuning that will help you to assure um, that your alerts are rules and rules are actually working but also allows to kind of have a playground with uh, and uh, have some fun <laughs> with PromQL language. Um, and because the truth is that human mind does not work in PromQL, that's its known saying. Um, so it is always a good pattern to test your alerts and queries uh, 
against ex mocked input. And I'm pretty excited that Prometheus, uh, in a recent version, released this tool, which is called, uh, well, command for the tool, for the prompt tool, prompt tool test rules, um, which is exactly what is uh, used for. Um, and I wish there was something like that when I was starting my journey from Prometheus, because then I could play with it and it would be much, much easier for me to understand PromQL. And how it works, basically, it allows you to put, uh, set up some unit test file uh, that defines input. Um, well, you can mock some input samples and assert the alert on the, on the certain, uh, that will be triggered uh, with expected labels in expected time. So for example, in 10 minutes of all time. Um, and once you run the prompt to test rules, it is either successful or not if your uh, expectants are met. And thanks to this, you can actually test your alert on CI before rolling out and actually decre de decreases the risk of potentially um, breaking your monitoring system for, for some time and allowing uh, to avoid a very tedious manual test. So imagine you, want you, you are rolling out new alert. How to test if that works? Do you really want to pull the cable out of the box to, to uh, make sure the alert was triggered, it's really difficult to test them. So usually you don't test, uh, which is wrong. This tool actually allows you to do that uh, programmatically, which is awesome. And uh, similar things with the quer uh, queries. You can fi finally test complex queries uh, with any potential input data, so you can play with it. Uh, you can use expanding notation, which allows you to put an input in a short way, uh, like increase, uh, linear increase or decrease, um, in certain for certain samples, uh, but the best part of it is that also gives you really high confidence in like uh, PromQL knowledge. So I would really recommend for you to like uh, yeah assert that you actually understand every edge case of your query because uh, that will help you in the future um, to not be, be hit by some uh, unexpected uh, PromQL well, query beh behavior. Cool. Um, to sum up, we quickly talk why, why uh, monitoring is crucial and what are the use cases for the metric-based monitoring. Uh, we briefly covered what are the features of Prometheus. Uh, and last but not least, uh, hopefully you learned about some tooling you can, uh, that will uh, help your productivity while working as with Prometheus. Um, I would recommend diving into those resources for further information. Um, so First of all, Prometheus docs, which are super, super nice. I think they are one of the best um, documentation I have seen for like tech product because it's up to date, consistent, and um, detailed. But there is definitely further reading uh, for topics I did not cover, like what's the difference be between counter, gouge, and histogram, and also best practice practices for monitoring and alerting. Uh, for those things, I recommend uh, Robert's Perception blog and Prometheus up and running book uh, written by the same person, Brian Brazil, Prometheus maintainer, and obviously SRE book as well. Um, that explains best practices from Google perspective. So yeah, that's it. Um, and I'm happy to take some questions. Any question? How we do it? We don't have this like throwing microphone, right? Can throw I can throw this one, okay? <laughs> Great. You can Thanks. Can you go back to the first unit testing page? I didn't get something there. Uh, you have the instance down rule with app equals one and the unit test succeeds. That makes no sense to me, shouldn't it would fail? Like it's down if up equals zero, and the rule is one. <laughs> no, you are totally right. Um, I, I I wanted to say that I made that pur on purpose uh, for you to to catch it, which is great. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, I was. Uh, I wanted to make a demo, but I didn't have much time. And so I was trying to you know, show you, hey, what about changing this up to like zero? Yeah, good catch, it's wrong. <laughs> any other question or any other bug you spotted? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yep. I think we are good to go. Thank you.